Oh, goodness. Okay. <laughs> welcome, 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 everyone, uh, to Chris Worley's gallery. My name is Jennifer Monet Cowley again, and I'm here in conversation with my friend and fellow artist, Abby Salami. Congratulations, girlfriend. Thank you. Congratulations on your show, The Miseducation of Girls and Boys. Welcome to our chat, Sex in the City. <laughs> so, first of all, tell us who is Abby Salami? <laughs> you told me this question, I didn't, I didn't think yeah. about it. Um, <laughs> Abby Salami, um, Nigerian, uh, fearless woman who just does crazy shit because she can and uh, willing to try anything. Uh, yeah, like leaving corporate to become an artist or <laughs> moving to New York. <laughs> um, thinker, I think a lot, and you'll see that in the work. I, I'm, I'm always ruminating on things, not necessarily because I'm trying to solve anything. I'm not a solver. <laughs> I'm just a thinker, I like to think. And uh, I don't know, my parents, daughter. <laughs> yeah, I, I would say that's me. Cool. Yeah. Well. Um, with the talk being called Sex in the City, and you recently just moved to New York, mm -hmm. so I think it's very appropriate, and then also with the subject matter. <laughs> the word, right, yeah. You know, the imagery, the imagery that we're seeing, um, what was the catalyst for you to create this body of work? Yeah, uh, so the move to New York was like primary, right? Um, my, even my style changed while I was like there, and I didn't, moved to New York, I was like, I'm going to change my style and, you know, uproot my whole practice. It was just something that, um, that I felt very deeply and I, I wanted to be um, a little bit freer with the work, a little bit more gestural with the work. But for like the subject matter, New York is all about sex. They mm -hmm. talk about sex a lot. Um, you'll meet somebody and within the first few minutes, they want to know who you're fucking, who you're fucking, <laughs> what gender you're fucking. Like it's like a very like, they're just in your face. It's not like Dallas at all. Um, and that was a huge culture shock for me. Um, and so I started asking myself questions about mm -hmm. just like my sexuality, but most importantly, my sexual education mm -hmm. or lack thereof, right? Yes. Um, I grew up Nigerian. We don't talk about sex. My parents are very uncomfortable in the audience right now. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and, but I've always been the person in my family who did talk about sex. Mm -hmm. I was in, in college, I was a peer uh, sexual health peer educator. Mm -hmm. So I've never strayed away from the topic. And um, so I started thinking about like my sexual education. I didn't have one, but like I did, right? Like through media, through my friends, through religion, through my culture, like those things informed what I know about sex and how I think about sex and how I think about uh, my sexuality or just femininity in general. Uh -huh. And so that's like thinking about all of that is what kind of like brought this body of work together, or just like, I want to I say some things that people might not like, but I'm going to say it anyways. <laughs> yes, yes, so, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. One thing I would like to dive into is your artist statement. Okay. It is very well written. <laughs> and I want to read it because even some of the terminology, some of the people probably don't even know what some of this stuff means. Okay. <laughs> so. I'm going to dive into it and I'm going to read it to you guys. Abby Salami's latest body of work, cheeky, off-killer, wry, playful, playfully but powerfully rails against the stereotypes that hunt our cliches and norms, the tyrannies and false imperatives of European beauty standards and the hypocrisies of heterosexual love. Topsy-turvy, tableau, expose, expose, society's foibles with sort Donic wit, <laughs> her frolicking visual riddles place frolly where we can see it. In the artist's loose gestural compositions, the shock of color in melee of form intentionally disorient the viewer while humor both lures and diffuses tension. Her clever formal means to broach miseducation. Girl. <laughs> she she, that was on me. I had no part in the writing of that. But, but when I read that, I was like, oh, okay. Yes. So. <laughs> like, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, 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 totally. Let's <laughs> untangle that. Because so, that's a, a lot. Thick. Yeah, yeah. No, Eve, came with the, Eve came with the heat. Yes. With that, that yes. I, I was like, okay, cool, cool, cool. 
cool. Um, where, where do I even start? Like, um, yes. <laughs> not really, where do I start? Like, where, like the whole thing. The just, whole thing. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's true. Like, everything that is said in there is true. Um, the work is talking about society, uh, particularly from the Nigerian woman point of view. Um, I talk a lot about religion. I talk about a lot about marriage. Um, I talk about, um, let's see, what else? Even just like um, African uh, re religion before mm -hmm. colonization, right? Like that painting, Mami Water's Revenge. Um, I, that came about, this is how much in New York influenced the work. Me and my friend were walking through the streets of New York. We stopped at this book, ancient book stop, uh, bookshop. It was amazing. They had books that were like from the 1400s in there. It smelled amazing. And we're, as we're walking around, I just noticed that there was like no book about any other cultures. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, well, maybe this is just like a European old bookstore. And we walk out and the first thing my friend said is, they really destroyed all our shit, didn't they? And I had that moment where I was like, oh, it's not that it didn't exist, it just doesn't exist anymore. Right. <laughs> and right. so I was like, I, I, I was really disgruntled by that. I was just like, so like, there's so much that I don't know because it was destroyed. Um, and I started thinking about Mami Wata. Mami Wata is this um, deity that uh, growing up, I believed was a bad person because they told us that um, she was, if you get in the water, she'll snatch you as a kid. Um, there was kind of under, undertones that she was kind of a sexually liberated <laughs> and that she would um, seduce men. And that was, I viewed that as like, I was basically raised to view that as icky, like don't be her. Yeah. Um, and then when I started doing research on her, um, before the colonizers arrived, she was actually a very powerful deity. She was one of the biggest ones in West Africa because she's water, she's a water goddess. And, um, and she was very revered. She was very confident in her sexuality. Um, she was just, just a bad bitch, honestly, like dead ass. Like yeah. if you got to like you read it, you're like, are they describing influencers on Instagram? <laughs> um, <laughs> like she was literally that person. And I was like, okay, I can see how if you come to a new land where mm -hmm. people view women as real people and not even just pe real people, but like powerful people. Right. And your religion says women are not people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're going to mm -hmm. need to demonize people like her. Yeah. So, uh, you know, this painting is kind of like me flipping the script and being like, well, it might have been destroyed. This is not archival in any way yet. Right. Um, but at least there'll be documentation of like how I think she really needed to be depicted mm -hmm. right. by the people who worshipped her, like the, the descendants of people who worshipped her. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> <laughs> so um, my next question, um, why so sexual? There is a lot here. Yeah. Um, I love your use of color. Thank you. The subject matter. I love all of it. And speaking of the subject matter, uh, what in the world is going on here? Because I'm, I'm this seeing one? this, I'm seeing this. This is like a scene out of Babylon. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I see thorns on this man who is morphing into a wolf <laughs> on his face. Um, I'm seeing what in the world is going on here. I see the cat hanging from the panties. Uh. <laughs> you're, you're stuck because you're trying yes. to be literal. You're yes. like describing things literally, yes, and that's why I it's am. hurting your brain. I am. If, I am if describing you noticed, things literally. I, um, yes. so with this body of work, it was the first time that I did not use my iPad. Mm -hmm. I did not plan anything. I literally would paint the canvas red, mm -hmm. and I would play some music, smoke a little bit of weed, and then just start just like Google, like literally doodling on there. Uh -huh. And then like, whatever comes out, it literally was like finding like shapes, like, uh -huh. and then I was just like, whatever comes out stays. And then sometimes things don't stay. Yes, <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, weed is legal in New York, so. <laughs> so <far. laughs> I was like, I forgot where I was talking to. <laughs> yeah, um, and so like, um, to, to look at the scenes literally, to think mm -hmm. that all the things are happening at the same time yes. will confuse you. Just mm -hmm. assume that it's like you're inside my head and you're trying to navigate your way out. <laughs> <laughs> and, and if you just, and I use a lot of symbolism in my work because um, I'm usually talking about things that, I, that are icky mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. you know, make people feel uncomfortable. So I feel like using symbolism works a lot. Yes. Um, so like in this painting, for instance, this is a, um, the plight of Eve too. Um, I did one last year that was very PG, or I thought it was PG, 
my mom hated it. <laughs> I thought it was PG. And, um, and then I was like, I wanted to do it again because mm -hmm. I really wanted to give um, a real character to these two women who a lot of people don't even know. Um, uh -huh. So that's Eve and that's Lilith. And I don't know if you guys know, but Lilith was the original wife of Adam. Um, she's kind of left out because she was believed that she was an equal and um, we can't have that. <laughs> so she's literally cast as a demon. In some texts, she is the serpent who actually tricks Eve into eating the apple, woman scorned, all that good stuff. Um, so here is another corruption, right? So she's corrupting Eve with this sexual, very sexual scene. Um, and then we have the eyes. I use that a lot when I'm um, in the work to um, symbolize that ick that's associated with sexuality, mm -hmm. uh, right? But like, but everyone's obsession with it. <laughs> like they're like, oh, you're so gross, you're a slut, you're whatever. But also, <laughs> let me see, <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, um, so I, I put that in there um, to like represent that. Um, even like the spider in the corner, like this is an actual painting, the smaller one's not out here. Um, that represents the ick, right? Like uh -huh. even, so I painted this painting, I posted like, I think like, working pro progress um, photos, and I was getting all kinds of commentary from people. Most of people were just like, why is this so sexy? And I was just like, you guys think this is sexy? Like, you th and like, to me, it's not sexy at all, because uh -huh. I'm talking about the corruption of like, two women, right? right. So I, that spider was the last thing I added, and I think I added it like, literally Daisy Fresh. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, I want to put this in there because like people were making me feel icky about my own work. So I was okay. like, the ick. <laughs> and just put it in the corner, right? Yeah. So like, um, so yeah. I, I, hopefully that kind of helps you. Like, don't be literal with the work. Like, yeah. Look at like look at all the elements. Um, if you have questions about the symbols, you can ask me. But like most of it is just like it's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be cheeky. It's supposed to make you think. But it's I'm not trying to change anybody's mind today. I just want like let's talk about stuff. Yeah, so, yeah, because yeah, that was um, like, I see things that speak to our current situation um, socially and politically mm -hmm. here in this work. Right. Tell us a little bit more right. about that. So a lot of the work, um, even like that piece, um, Roe versus Wade was, I, I, like, I felt like that moment started unsettling me, right? Because once that happened, even the work that I did I think I only did a couple pieces after that, but the one I did for the show in Germany, mm -hmm. like I wanted to be looser in that work. And if you look at that work versus the, uh, my other works, it's looser. And then from there, I was just like getting looser with the work, but I was still thinking about like, how do I convey this frustration, this helplessness? Because, so okay, being from Nigeria, things don't, walk, don't work in Nigeria. It's a very, like it just doesn't. Like they're just, it's a lot, the infrastructure's not there. Um, the laws are not there, the politicians are corrupt. I always thought that America was the perfect place, right? Coming, even before moving here, we all just thought that like, America is a place where things work. Right. And then you, come, and then you have something like Roe versus Wade get overturned, yeah. and you're like, oh. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and uh, so like in the work, there's like, I kind of, I am talking about kind of like um, femininity and the powerlessness sometimes of it. Um, like that piece is, um, um, hang in there, pussy power. And mm -hmm. the reason the cat doesn't have it, uh, any eyes is because I feel, at first I thought that feminism and, and progress we're making had eyes. Roe versus Wade happened, we have no eyes. Yeah. <laughs> it's like that helplessness, that, that feeling of just like, yeah, I want to be a ferocious, you know, feline, but yeah. I can't because you don't even have the ability to do so here, apparently. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Who and what inspires you? Um, who and what inspires me? Um, I'm inspired mostly by my crazy thoughts. It's me, me, me. <laughs> yeah, it's mostly me. Um, cause like I said, I think a lot. Like I'm a very, yeah. like I think a lot. So I, okay, let me not say that then. Other artists who are doing work that's talking about the things that I um, feel uncomfortable talking about okay. um, inspire me. Mm -hmm. um, so I really like um, um, the works by uh, Robert Cole Scott, mm -hmm. uh, Faith Ringgold, um, even like in music, Fela Kuti, right? He was mm -hmm. like a rebel his entire life. Yeah. I listen to his work, uh, his music all the time while I'm working. Yes. And I think that defiance <laughs> like seeped into my, into my system slowly. Um, but yeah, so like people, 
other, other people who are, are speaking out and being rebellious. I think those people inspire me to feel like I need to keep saying what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. um, like at first I was just like, who cares? But then when I start talking about it, people are like, no, we really care. And I'm like, oh, okay, well then good. That's what I, the intent or, intended purpose. Um, so yeah, those, those are the people I would say like, in, inspire me. Very nice, very, very nice. Which is your favorite work of art in this body? Oh, my work does revenge without even blinking. Okay. <laughs> it's the photo, it's, it's just, I mean, first of all, um, it's sexy as fuck. And, and it's just <laughs> like, but it's so defiant. Like she like, the look in her eyes, the mirror, um, like even just like the meaning, like it's, she's just, she's just very confident. And I, I, I put that, I wouldn't take that painting down in my studio. I didn't have enough walls to like have all the work up, but that one I did not take down the entire time I was painting yeah. because I just kept looking at it and she kept giving me this confidence. She kept like being like, Abby, I know everything's really hard right now, but you're a bad bitch. Hang in there, you got this. You don't need to, like, you know, like, so I kept like, yeah, I, that one I, was the last one I packed because I was like, <laughs> You're leaving me. I didn't want to see you again. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's that's hands down like my absolute favorite. It is, yeah. They're all so beautiful, so deep. Thank you. I was looking closely, especially at these two in the back, and just looking at the money um, in the imagery <laughs> that's, on, that? that's on the Most money. People miss that. <laughs> And I see the Kyrie shells. Don't call and, people out today. And I see the coins and I see the bills over here. Talk to us about that. <laughs> yes. Um, thank you for calling me out. Um, <laughs> I'm talking about sex and I'm talking about uh, capitalism, religion, mm -hmm. and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. So I, I thought it'd be funny to have dollar bills with sexually explicit images uh -huh. in them because in that scene particularly, right? So that one's called Prenope. And that whole painting is based on a joke that I say all the time about Nigerian men, which is that, <laughs> <laughs> which is that on, the, on a Nigerian man's wedding day, he turns to his best man and says, aha, I am finally married. I can now start dating. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> Anytime I say that to like men, Nigerian men, they're like, it's funny, but it's also kind of true. Uh -huh. um, so that painting is entirely about the, like that hypocrisy, right? So like she, you have the bride who is basically trying to get the attention of her groom, but he's clearly like, he's like, I'm already married. What are you doing? Go away. Yes. <laughs> like, I'm like, I'm going, I'm about to start dating now. Uh -huh. um, so he's about to start dating and she's over here like, could you please not? Um, and she's signing the prenup, like, and she's like, like before I finish signing this, like, can you like put, pull it together? But we have the best man um, underneath the bride's dress. Mm -hmm. and, because I always ask men, when, <laughs> the, the, men who, the men who really believe in cheating, that they're like, you know, you should just deal with it as a woman. I'm yeah. like, what do you think your girl's doing? Like right now, what, where do you think she is? Yeah. You're like, uh, at home. I'm like, you, with confidence, you can say that? With your chest? You sure? <laughs> she's alone? <laughs> And most of the time they're like, wait, what? And I'll be like, is there a best friend that she's always hanging out with? Like a girl that like, they go on trips and do stuff together. Uh-huh. Yeah, I think that's probably <laughs> what she's doing. <laughs> so anyway, so we have the best man underneath the dress because I'm like, if there, if there are four men on the planet and there are four women on the planet and you're telling men that they can do whatever they want and they can sleep with whoever they want and you're telling the women that you have to be a virgin and you have to be virginal, who are the men sleeping with? So, <laughs> so the best man is underneath there because it's like if you're not tending to your garden, you're gonna get some you're gonna get some rabbits in there eating your carrots, <laughs> and that's what's happening. And so we have this best man speech on the floor, crumbled up because it's like you know he, he's like best man. <laughs> yeah. And then we have the um the uh, it kind of symbolizes like religion. The guy in the back. That's why he's covering his eyes because uh -huh. it's like. Despite the fact that, like you know, your mar like marriage for the most part, it's like has a like very religious um, mm -hmm. undertone, overtone. <laughs> um, there, there's still a very like expectation that like men can still do what they want. Yeah. Like, just as long as, and then we have his tentacles reaching for the money, which I don't know if anybody noticed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because it's like at the end of the day, money's quite important for some of these institutions. So, yeah, I chose violence. But yeah. I <laughs> that, is, that 
there is quite a bit going on because yeah. he's holding it's on It's very to dense. It. That's yes. how the gallery in Chelsea described it. They're like, your work is very dense. And I was like, I love that. Yes. Yeah. Because that's, that's right here. Because I, you know, he's looking quite eager. <laughs> <laughs> and I used a lot of um, pop culture references. Yes. To like tone down uh -huh. the, the, the sting of what I'm saying. So like it looks familiar because I am trying to make it look familiar. Mm -hmm. Like that wolf, we've all seen that wolf in our cartoons. Hey Jeff, I can see you there. Um, <laughs> and yeah, so we're all, we're just, I just use that because like if you can, I can borrow from that and kind of use what you already know about wolves mm -hmm. from cartoons yes. and like really exaggerate that. Then people are like, oh, I understand, I understand what's going on because they, they, they know for the most part. So yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. There's a lot going on in that particular painting. Yeah, because he's holding on to his stuff and <laughs> <laughs> he's just ready to go. But in a broader sense, I can also see where this can tie into this particular piece. Yeah, it's a helplessness. And, and yeah. Yes, and Roe versus Wade and yeah. the overturning of it where men can do just about anything. Literally. And fun. women are just kind of stuck to kind of hold their own. Yeah. And it's, oh, one thing I wanted to point out, sorry, at that point. So he stepped on her wedding dress, and I yes. left the footprints on there because the second she's married, yeah. she's useless to yeah. even him and everybody else. So she's like soiled, yeah. like in the culture, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. that's, why, that's why her dress is messed up. If like you're he has his thumb on her. Yeah, he's, already, yes. he's like, oh, that's mine. We're good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, you ain't going nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. There's nothing in any of these paintings that I just like kind of did for fun like if yeah. it's there there's like a reason there's a symbol you can ask me but like i'm like i'm very very deliberate with like everything like there's a reason why they're all there <laughs> i do have some questions about this piece oh, with the favorite. thigh gap and i'm thinking about myself because i used to have a thigh gap but now my thighs rub together so <laughs> and i don't know exactly how i feel about that but <laughs> Tell us about this piece. <laughs> All right, so this piece is called The First Day of My Re-Education. And it's essentially, so this is young me, like um, prepubescent or pubescent me, right? Um, no, prepubescent. And I'm laying in the tub, and so like the boobs are new, that's why they look so, they're, they're protruding, and they look tender. Um, we have the Barbie doll, because growing up I mostly had white mm -hmm. Barbie dolls, and I didn't realize that it was even a problem. I read teen, all the teen magazines a lot. I had a, um, developed a very fun eating disorder from that. Um, and so in this piece, the older me, me now, has figured out how to travel back in time and is coming in to save her. Um, so essentially, she's gonna come in and like be like, okay, all these things that you're looking at are only making you feel bad about yourself. Yeah. And I'm here to, to let you know. That's why it's like her leg is like very like, I'm here to let you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I'm coming in to re-educate. Um, so yeah, that's 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 that piece. Nice. Just like saving saving little Abby. Yeah. Yeah. Very very cool. Thanks. Well, the other question, the last question I want to ask you, I'm going to. Um, most of you, some of you may be familiar with the documentary uh, Black Art in the Absence of Light on HBO, and I'm going to read a statement and see how Abby answers this question. <laughs> Do we have the capacity to be great makers in the absence of light? If blackness has something to do with the absence of light, does black art mean that sometimes I'm making when no one's looking? Sometimes we are trained and conditioned to only make if there is light that makes us codependent upon a thing that we don't control. Are you willing to make in the absence of light? Oh yeah, definitely. I'm compelled to make. Um, literally, I was on the plane and I was like, and I was like, I think I'm gonna go to Michael's and buy some paint. <laughs> so I was like, I'm gonna be here for how many days? And I'm not gonna be able to like make anything. Mm -hmm. um, I was, I was already feeling like itchy. Just like I want, I want to make something. I want to, uh, I want to create something. Um, so yeah, I, I would be compelled to create. Okay, I'm gonna answer your question two ways, because I'm taking it two ways. Okay, sure. The first one is, Absolutely. would you create if no one is looking? Definitely, I, yes. I don't have a choice. The other one, I'm gonna take it in more racial ways, like, can you make work that is outside of whiteness? Mm -hmm. I've tried. No, yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's too much a part of our culture. It's too much a part of every day, every single day of my life 
that I, didn't even, that I don't even realize. Um, I see a therapist, and I specifically chose a white one, mm -hmm. so that she could tell me how ridiculous some things that happen to me are. Because uh -huh. I'll say it in passing, and she'll be like, I, da, 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 pull my back, what was that? And I was like, yeah, yeah, da, da, da. And she's like, that's not normal. And I'm like, uh, every black person I've talked to thinks that's normal. And yeah. she's like, it's still not normal. <laughs> That's a trauma bond. <laughs> That's not good. Um, so yeah, so and and I appreciate that she understands that like that cultural difference is the yeah. reason that like we work so well together. But yeah, no, I, I don't think it's possible to to do that. I think um, the atrocities that happened, um, you know, several centuries ago, were so impactful, mm -hmm. and I, I don't even know how we would undo all of it. Yeah. It's um, I don't even think the people who were orchestrating it thought they would be to this level. Um, so no, I don't think it's possible, and I think um, it's sad because there's so many times I'm sitting in front of a canvas and I'm like, don't center whiteness. Yeah. <laughs> like talk about yourself, don't center whiteness, but I'm like, so much of it, so much of what I've had to go through uh -huh. is because of the things that happened in the past. So it's like, then what else would I talk about? Yeah. You know what I mean, yeah, so yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. Very, very cool. I really love the way you think. Such a beautiful mind. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Such a deep thinker. Um, I love the surrealism um, that's represented here. It reminds me of the piece that you had hanging in the um, Us Two Phenomenal yeah. Women show, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and also some of the pieces that you took over to Renaissance. Yes. Yes. yes, yes so yes, yes. Yeah. I'm I'm happy to see it. <laughs> I'm happy yeah. to see that you reached back to revisit yeah. that particular style of work. Yeah. So kudos to you. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I want to open the floor up to questions. Yes. So since I've had the opportunity to stare at this for a while, because so I'm sitting right in front of it, um, and I see so many amazing things within it, but the one question I have for you, Abby, is, uh, so I see Medusa's tears uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, supporting the earth and flourishing the earth in a way for these ants to escape, where are they going? They're running away. So I painted this painting at a very low moment while I was in New York. Um, I was really struggling with the people's personalities there um, because people are just way more aggressive than they are here and they're just, they're just not like, it's, you know, I'm a sensitive person. <laughs> and, um, so I was, I was trying to convey the sadness I was feeling, but also the hopefulness that I want to keep, because like, I, like, I don't want just sad art in my, in my, my studio. Um, so with her tears, I was just like, you know, crying is not necessarily bad, right? Um, sometimes it's a shedding of mm -hmm. something that you need to let go of. Um, and so yes, I, I had them kind of like watering this um, flower that's coming out of the concrete, because sometimes that's how, that's how I feel I'm, I am in New York, is like I'm like, trying to grow out of concrete. Um, and yeah, so the, the ants are kind of disappearing into this like weird room that leads nowhere. Um, and I think it's like, I was feeling very, I wanted to escape. <laughs> I wanted to leave, but I was like, to where? And then that's why it doesn't lead anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Of course, yeah. Yes. Yeah, but you hey, the, uh, the work. Thank you. Who, what artists are inspiring you? Because I've really seen a major change in the world. Right, right, right. Secondly, are there any Nigerian artists that you've been following that helped you? Hmm. Wow. No, no Nigerian artists. Um, when I was going in this work, I was terrified because I was like, I have not seen anything like this anywhere. Um, and that used to be something that would really scare me when I was kind of starting off as an artist, but now I'm like, bet. <laughs> I'm like, that's awesome. Okay, good. Um, as for the artists that inspired me, um, I said earlier, Robert Colescott, like, um, I saw his work for the first time last year at um, the Arlington Museum, the 30 Americans mm -hmm. exhibition. Yeah. I stopped in my tracks. And I've never done that. Like, I look at art, and I do love art, but I've never, like, just stopped and be like, does this person live in my brain? I literally was like, I, this is another person who understands how my brain works. And I actually sat, they had a bench right in front of it. I sat down. I literally just sat down and stared at the painting, and I was just like, it was like, like, it was like things were unlocking in my brain. Mm -hmm. and, and I was just like, oh, I didn't know I could do this, <laughs> you know? And then since then, I've been like, kind of like finding my path to this, to this point. And when I, so this is the first piece I painted in New York. And I, it started on my iPad, which um, I was trying to break away from. So I, I put the iPad down, 
I'd had up for a week, I'd not done anything to it because I was scared. And so I said to myself, what would you do if you were not scared? Like, mm -hmm. what would you do to this painting right now if you yeah. were not scared? And I just went in and it felt amazing. It felt so good. Um, and I saw the freedom in the work that I saw in Robert Colescott's work. And I was just like, okay, good. Like, I, like the message that he was trying to convey like got into me somehow yeah. <laughs> and it's like yeah. coming out in the work. So yeah, that's, I would say he's the biggest inspiration for the work. Just saying hi to everybody. Yes, Missy. Um, I, I've been on you for a few years now. A little bit. I've watched this metamorphosis of your work, like, transcend into a space of time that feels like you've kind of opened up a portal into your cerebral and allowed us in. When did you find the courage to do that? <laughs> when I moved to New York. <laughs> <laughs> and I do love the word that you said, portal. That's another thing that um, mm -hmm. might help, help you guys understand the, the, the work a little better. Uh, a lot of the scenes are portals. Um, so like, you'll see that that's a portal, that the scene behind is a portal. So I think if you think about it as like, just moving through like different worlds, then it'd be easier. Um, literally that, that moment I described that I was sitting in my studio and I said to myself, what would you do if you were not scared? But that was the moment that I was just like, like it was like a, something else woke up in me. And I was just like, let's go to the theater every day and do bad art. <laughs> like, just like make a ton of mistakes, right? Because I, finally, really, I got, finally got to the point where I'm like, you know you can paint over it, right? Yeah. So do it. So literally sometimes I'll be, I'll be working on something and I'll be like, I wonder if purple would work. <laughs> and it doesn't make any sense and I'll just go for it. And if I don't like it, yeah. I'll paint over it. But it adds layers. And I, I try to do with the, with the work, I try to not be as precise and covering everything up yeah. like was in, my, in the past. I, was, I, I want mistakes to show. I want you to see that I've changed my mind a couple times and move things um, in, in that painting back there. That background scene was like three different things. So if you stare hard enough, you, you can probably see that it's not, that, that was not the original scene. Um, but like stuff like that is like, you know, like I just started doing that more. Um, and it's fun. It's fun, to, it's fun to go to the studio and play. Yeah. I didn't have any play in my practice. And now, I, and now when I go to the studio, it's dancing and doodling on canvases and music, and it's fun. Like, it's, a, it's like a really a party. People think I'm crazy, though, because I, I leave my door open. And they're like, what, is, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> like, but well, look at the work, though. So it's worth it, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> Sounds like freedom to me. So free. Yeah. So much freedom. Oh, yeah. my god. It's, I love being in my studio. It's one of my favorite places like, on the planet, honestly. Yeah. Great. Yeah. And didn't recognize you when I walked in because of this metamorphosis, physically and in every other way. You spoke, you mentioned something about this painting. Please. Yeah. Would you talk about that? Because there is so much religiosity symbolism in this one. Yeah. And that symbolism is so apparent in our culture now and has a lot to do with what we've gone through with this Roe v. Wade right. issue here right. in our country now. So would you speak to this one? Right. So this piece is called The Best Education of Boys and Girls 2. Um, the original one I did in 2015 and it was just the, the bottom scene with the, with the man and the woman but not without the wolf. So it's just a man with a um, bikini over, or not bikini, uh, panties over his face and the woman with the cross. And I did that because at the time I had a friend who was dating this girl and he was Nigerian and he just thought that like he could do whatever he wanted. <laughs> and I was just like, it's like really not fair. And she was like very virginal and very like religious. And I just felt, and I, so I borrowed from Rene Marguerite, um, the, son of, yeah, the son of man where he has mm -hmm. an apple in front of their face. And I put like what, is, what I thought was like foremost in their mind, um, and that's why they have. So the man has the panties because he's allowed to sow his royal oats and do whatever he wants. And then the women are told to um, be virginal and be religious and all that good stuff. Um, and uh, so I have the penguins there because <laughs> that's why I love animals. But I love them for the fact that penguins are uh, monogamous. They like they will find one partner and they will date. They will be with that partner until they die. They mourn the loss of a partner. Sometimes they will actually starve themselves to death if one of them dies. So that guy in the corner that's by himself, <laughs> that's like, that's, that he's sad because he doesn't have a partner. So I was just thinking about matrimony. I was thinking about um, 
how, like how, like are humans monogamous? Like some animals are, but not all of them are. So like that's why I put that there. It's like a just juxtaposition between what men are allowed to do and in matrimony versus like animals who are doing it correctly. <laughs> Don't need help, <laughs> right? Um, and then so I also have in there the um, in a, like feeding off of the whole being virginal thing. I have the girls in the ballet slippers on a bar and then the girls in the stilettos on a stripper bar. So like, once again, if, you, if you're literal about it, you'll miss it because you're gonna be like, that's a pole and they're, they're, those two things are happening at the same time. They're not happening at the same time, they just happen to be near each other. Um, and so like, I just wanted that juxtaposition between being you know, the, you know, a sexy, uh, um, sexually liberated woman versus being this like very like virginal thing. And I was like, I also thought it was really funny because I was like, in ballet and in stripping, they're wearing very minimal clothing. <laughs> and yet one is viewed really bad, and yes. the other one is, oh, it's beautiful, it's elegant. And I just thought that was interesting, especially since my sister does pole dancing. And when she does it, it's beautiful. It's like, yeah. it's art. Yeah. And I just thought that like, that was just like, that's an interesting kind of like juxtaposition. And then the scene in the background is the product, like what happens whenever you allow people to well, men to be like whatever and tell women that they have to be virginal. So there's two, there's really two scenes actually. So the one on the right with the, the woman with the fuzzy slippers, so she's basically catching her husband at a bar with another woman. And then the one on the left is the husband catching his wife <laughs> with another man. Because what, what is your wife doing? <laughs> when, is she, when you're cheating, when you're busy, what is she doing? Uh, uh, so uh, yeah, that's that, that's that piece. <laughs> it's a lot in there. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes, Andrea. Oh, she had, she. Oh, oh. Yes. I was just going to say, this isn't really a question, this is a comment, is that you're described as untrained, but when I look at your compositions, they seem very well informed. Um, and I also think that, that the pattern that you employ is very sophisticated, and I think it really holds a lot of these compositions together, like yeah. this one especially. And that one, actually, just the pattern is just really lovely. Thank you, thank you. And I do do that deliberately. I do, um, uh, somebody called it, somebody did a studio visit with me when I was in, um, in New York during my residency. And they're like, they said, you use a lot of alliterations in your work. And I was like, the what? <laughs> I was like, alliterations is a word. Like, what do you mean? And they're like, no, you like repeat things in your work to kind of create, like, like you were saying, the patterning. And I, I had not, I not noticed that I'd been doing that. And I was like, oh, okay, that's, um, thank you for noticing that, because that's like a, apparently a thing I do subconsciously and didn't even realize that that, that was a thing. Yeah. 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 Very cool. Andrea. So I was excited to hear that one of the cool jobs was the influence, because I could clearly see that even though you, you say you recently uh, discovered this work, it's like, that's coming across wrong. And even before this body of work, I, I felt some of that coming across. Um, and so there's this cartoonish, cartoonish presentation and also dark sense of humor going through it. Being in New York, uh, do you go and see any comedians with dark sense of humor? Do you have any favorites? Do you have a dark sense of humor yourself? I don't really like comedy, unless it's Dave Chappelle. <laughs> so yeah, dark humor, right? <laughs> Dave Chappelle's my man, and I love Dave Chappelle because um, I'm kind of going off a tangent, but I want to say this because it ties to the work. Um, Dave Chappelle's a storyteller. Mm -hmm. He's actually not—I wouldn't say he's a true comedian. He doesn't—he's not trying to. It's always a punchline. Most of the time, he's just trying to point out stuff that, like, we already thought we like we know, but like, you're like, why didn't I think about it this way? So I, I was talking to my sister about this. I was like. Chappelle will walk you into this room, but he will guide you in a way where you will not see the elephant in the room until he says it. Mm -hmm. And that's storytelling. And in, um, in uh, Yoruba culture, the ancient Yoruba culture, the reason that there's not a lot of documentation is because storytelling was very revered. Mm -hmm. And the good pe people who were good orators were like the true artists. And once I found that out, like a couple of years ago, I was like, I want every piece to tell a story. Mm -hmm. I, need, I needed to have a narrative. I, it can't just be art for art's sake. Like, what, what am I talking about here? And it's so many times, it's like, because I do this very um, stream of consciousness sometimes, it takes me weeks to figure out what my brain was trying to tell me. Like yeah. that one, somebody asked me the day I painted it, I was like, I have no idea. 
<laughs> I was like, I literally just like, it came to me in a dream and I went straight to the studio and I painted it. It, took, it was so fast. It was one of those things like, it was almost like I was guided by somebody else. Yeah. And then I like, I sat and thought about it. It was the studio hanging up and then I was like, God, they look so helpless. And I was like, oh, okay. That helplessness, got it. <laughs> like that's, that's what I'm talking about. Um, so yeah, I forget what the question was, but yes. Chappelle, dark humor, yes, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. that's my guy. <laughs> Anyone else? Yes. yes. I'm just curious about because you talked about Lilith, and, uh, you know, it's just very esoteric, most people don't know what that is, and uh, except for Fraser's wife. <laughs> <laughs> So the original painting, well, that's not true. Oh, wow, this should be three. We need to change that. This is three. Um, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, because I just remembered there was an original painting that I did when I was in high school that was the original Plight of, e um, Plight of Eve. And I just basically just like uh, co-opted the um, Son of Man and just put a woman, a nude woman, and um, she was holding her uh, uh, like vaginal area and she was bleeding and it was an apple but it had a bite in it so that was the original one and then I painted another another one last year for a, it was supposed to be a group show in London but they ended up canceling the show um, and I was the theme of the show was the female gaze and f like basically just essentially femininity so I started thinking about like the original female Eve I thought <laughs> right so I like let's just start doing some research I just started looking her up and then like I literally typed first female, like in YouTube. And then Lilith came up and I'm like, who's this? And it started going deeper and deeper into the tunnel. And I'm like, wow, this runs deep. This is bad. Like literally this woman was cast out of Eden because she wanted to be an equal. A religion that starts like that <laughs> doesn't finish well for people who look like me. Um, so yeah, I'm more of a thinker than, than like just, I just doodle a lot. I just think a lot. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. Not really a question, but just to say, you know, I'm so grateful that you listened to your inner wisdom that said, what would I do if I wasn't afraid? And that in doing that, you've created something that asks us to not be afraid, to look at it and to explore it and to ask questions and to question our own beliefs and thoughts about all of these topics. So, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Because there, there are quite a few artists here in the room, and I, I'm honored to know you and to call you my friend. What? And Not you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the gems that I'm taking away from this chat that we've had, and with you not being afraid, is for all of us to just go for it. No, no holds barred. Yeah. Yeah, just go for it and just do it. The yeah. fear in your head is always bigger than the, than the exactly. actual fear. Exactly, exactly. So to not live in fear. I always say that to myself whenever I'm, I'm too scared to do something. It's like, what, what is the worst case scenario? Yeah. Like, the absolute worst case scenario. And, but then I also remind myself that, like, the universe is kind of 50-50, right? Yeah. So it means, like, good things also happen. Yeah. You should remember that whenever you're, you're feeling scared. You're like, Absolutely. You're like oh, this is going to fail. I'm going to make a fool of myself. It's going to suck. And then you're like, well, actually, it's like kind of 50-50 that I, it actually kind of turns out awesome. Uh -huh, <laughs> and everything uh -huh. just kind of works out. Um, because like life, right? Like when yeah. you're taking risks, it's like you, you're, you're, you're kind of, you're, you're taking a chance. Yeah. Uh, but you just remember that it could work out. Yeah, because apparently it worked out. Because <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> I mean, you. like, just from the subject matter and which, embodies all these topics that we need to be talking about. So thank you for bringing this to us and for putting it out there uh, unapologetically, um, the boldness of it, um, 
the everything of it. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you for appreciating. I appreciate it. <laughs>